Welcome to Knitting Step by Step, the video podcast that teaches you how to knit. I'm your host, Jason Block. And I'm your knitting instructor, Ivy Rosner. And this is episode 17, The Beaded Hat. And I have to apologize for this taking so long, but the first attempt at a beaded hat was kind of cursed. How bad? Well, first, there was a knot in the yarn I had been using. Okay, knotted yarn. Check. Go ahead. Then I picked up a pack of beads at a shop near where I work, and one of them cracked on the yarn. Okay, crack beads. Check. Then I sat on the knitting needle and broke it. Next. (laughs) (laughs) Then one of the beads had a bit of a sharpness on the inside, so it frayed straight through the yarn. Okay, broken needle, frayed yarn. Go on. And then the pattern didn't work. Okay, so we've got five things wrong. Look, I got this guy Benedict. He's here in the U.S. <laughs> Let, if, if he, he's here in New York too, maybe he can you know, uncurse my knitting. Yeah, but I, I actually think we got someone a little bit more close to home, who is actually the sponsor of this episode. Mm-hmm. Who is Ellen at Earth Fair, E A R T H F A I R E dot com, and she has solved at least the material problems with this episode um there's been a lot of questions going into beaded knitting about getting the right crochet hook getting the right size beads getting the right size yarn that will fit into beads and making certain everything will work together and that is a little complicated so i contacted her and i asked her if she could set up a kit she has really fantastic quality beads i love her beads and she said that she would be willing to and then she went all out i asked her to just Make a page that just had everything she needed, everything that everyone would need, just together on one page. She said, well, I can order a lighter weight, worsted weight yarn so that the beads will go on easier. And I can test the crochet hooks to make certain we've got the right ones. And I can order the round beads with the bigger holes so that they can fit on better. And I can put it in a package and offer everyone a discount on it. She's just amazing. <laughs> and and that, that is absolutely fantastic. And that is going above and beyond for you guys. So, and this package, I believe, is $18.95, which is pretty affordable for someone who is starting this particular thing. And what you will get in this package is the following, if you don't mind me demonstrating this. You get one of these, which is a skein of yarn. Uh, In this particular case, this demonstrated yarn is Merino wool, which is very, very, very cool. They're all Merino. Yeah, they're all Merino wool. You will get one of these which is a tube of beads which you will need for your project. You will also get one of these, which is a Susan Bates steel crochet hook in this particular case. And you will also get this, which is really kind of hard to see, but it is a floss, what a floss? A floss starter. A floss we're starter. gonna use that in the beginning of the project to string the beads. Which we're gonna show in a little bit. Now that all package, that package again, one skein of yarn, one bead, one crochet hook, excuse me, one tube of beads and a floss will be at a discounted price for the Knitting Step-by-Step Podcasters at $18.95. And the link for the page will be in the show notes. Yes, I just want to give you two pieces of information. If you feel at all uncertain about this project, you're going to want to pick up either the cream yarn or the coneflower yarn because a paler yarn will let you see your stitches better. Also, the beads are triangle shaped and round. You're going to want to pick up the round if you're at all uncertain because those are going to be a little easier to work with when you're hooking your beads. And these are two dark colored round pieces of round beads. So, there you go. So, let's take a look at everything and play with the colors. Absolutely. Okay, the blue bead here is an example of one of the triangle beads and you can see how the outside at least looks triangular. It's going to have a slightly smaller hole. They're beautiful. They lay well on your knitting. These are going to be just a tiny bit more challenging to work with. This is an example of one of the round beads and you can see the hole is just slightly larger, a little bit more even, so it's going to be a little easier for you to work with. And these are the beads. I love the gold. Now the we're about to come up to some matte, some um, silver lines, and these pop so amazingly on a dark yarn. I'm in love with them. I think I'm going to end up using them with the navy or something. They're gorgeous. Okay, this yarn is merino, which is a fabulous kind of yarn. It's 
a super wash, which means it's been treated so that it won't felt in the washing machine, but I find anything with beads, because of the fragility of beads, still needs to be hand, hand washed. Wash. Yeah, I, they, I highly recommend hand washing this. And again, for those who don't know what felting is, what is felting? Oh, felting is when the fibers in wool lock and it causes the garment to both lose stitch definition and shrink. Yes. It, it technically it's called fulling if you do it in the washing machine, but everyone says felting. Also, I know for, throughout this entire podcast we've been suggesting getting balls of yarn to avoid the issue of having to wind a skein of yarn into a ball. These are skeins and we're going to teach you today how to wind them into balls. We're going to show you two methods. One is just by hand, using two people for hands. And the other is going to be using a Swift and a ball winder. Now these colors are, I, I'm looking at these and these colors are fantastic. These colors. So let's go through the seven colors because you can, these are what the people are going to buy. Right. right. There are two others also that I don't have. Terracotta and Caribbean. Okay. Uh, Caribbean's like a Okay. So, so, so we're going to start on, I believe on this side here. Yes. And we have what? Indigo. Okay. That's indigo, right? And yeah. then next is? Next is Neptune. Oh, I like the name on that one. Uh, too. Like the sea, you know, god of the sea. This green one. Russian sage. Now this, I don't know if you can tell, uh, coming close if you would, is a marled yarn. It's two different colors. I can, I can see it with my eye, but it's sort of like a green and a dark green, a white green sort yeah, of. Yeah, like a, almost a bluer green and a yellower green. That would be really nice. That's really nice. And it's a very subtle marl, so I don't think it's going to be too much with the bead. And personally, not for nothing, I have, I, I'm absolutely in love with this color. The like, lilac? Yeah. The really, really, really beautiful color that would pop on a hat with say maybe gold beads or something like the, those beads. Let's put the gold beads against it and see what it looks like. Yeah, something like that. Let's put some beads on. Yeah, something like that. Oh yeah, look at that. That would be, see, that would be pretty fun. Yeah. You know, and now, these are the two that we suggested if you don't have, you know, have a problem. What did you say? The, the, the cream. Right. And any kind of a natural or pale yarn is going to be really easy to see your stitches on. A darker yarn is going to hide it. That's one of the reasons that these are very smooth yarns. Well, smooth yarns work better with beads, but also work better to really see what you're doing. The coneflower also, if you can get in close on that one, the pink, is also a marl yarn. But you're, you're kidding me. No, look at it. It is pink on pink. You can just about make that out. Wow, okay. Very subtle. Yeah. And it, it gives it a sense of like a, a richness of depth to mm. the color that's amazing mm -hmm. but really really subtle and this last one I think the actual the pink yarn if I can just go back to something for a second I like that with the blue I like that with the blue I'm good stick some blue beads on there and absolutely how they play together pink and blue mm-hmm oh yeah that's great that's fantastic that's great and the last one is called burgundy I believe yes burgundy and Let's go with the gold again, yeah. Yeah, now I personally would say gold. And yeah, look at that. That's fine. However, Sharon, a kind of woman, liked the silver lined beads. I'll put them down here. And I think they kind of pop cutely too. And also, I'm going to take some of the gold off for the moment. Let me show what the root beer would be, just for the idea of tone on tone. And now we're going to show you how to ball yarn. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to show you how to ball a skein of yarn two ways. The first way is the more fun way if you have two people. This is a gig. I get to do this for about five to ten minutes. Uh, what we have here is the burgundy skein of yarn. And the first question we ask, do you see the way the skein of yarn is looked like this? Why don't we knit directly from this and why do we ball yarn? As we because, well, let me get this thing started and then I'll explain it because this is a long process. You're just going to open this up. And it, be, and it comes. And it comes with a loop. Hands in. You'll have a knot. Oh, okay. You okay. will unknot the knot. I'm not really good at unknotting knots. So. 
bear with me a moment as I do this.